And one of the things I say to filmmakers who come and want to work with me, I say to them, look, if you're here to get a movie financed, mm -hmm. I'm not your guy. Mm -hmm. But if you're here to have a career as a filmmaker and willing to play the long game, then I'd be happy to discuss your project. We are super thrilled. We have Frank Osama here today. He's an executive producer and producer in films. Have you guys ever wondered how a film gets financed? How deals get put together? Well, this is going to be a special treat for you guys. Franco, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. So when Biden and I first met you, we were literally blown away how you started in a completely different field. You started producing very relatively later in life, yep. competing with like 20-somethings. Can yep. you talk about that? Since I was eight years old, I had a dream of being in the entertainment business, but the dream wasn't ever to be famous or to be an actor or to be on a screen or on a stage. My dream was always behind the scenes. And I thought to myself, I, I, I need to make the commitment. And my commitment was to be in the business by the time I was 40. I only had about a month. <laughs> and I got a, a position as a publicist for a, a celebrity photographer. That is so <laughs> cool. I just made it. That's wonderful. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. I, think, I think one of the things that artists need to do is make the goals, set goals, and then yeah. they'll make it. And so you did that. Even that one, just putting a time goal on it. So, Franco, what are some of the biggest challenges in raising financing for a film? The trouble with most, especially first and second time filmmakers, because that's kind of who I focus on. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you mess up on your first movie, you're in trouble. <laughs> because right. then you, you can't go raise a million dollars and then only return 250,000. Have you done the footwork and determined exactly what the budget should be on your film? Yeah. Or you're just literally pulling a number out of the air and saying, I can make this movie for a million bucks. Right. The question isn't, where am I gonna get a million bucks for me? The question is, how am I gonna turn that million bucks into two? And in my world, if I can't see the other side, if I can't see a project having enough legs to be able to make it into distribution and get enough of a recoupment, when I get my valuations, they give us three estimates, the low, the middle, and the high. Mm -hmm. Well, my rule of thumb is your low has to be two times budget or don't make the movie. Your low has to be two times your high. budget? Uh, your budget, right. So if your budget, it's a rule of thumb, yeah. Right? But if your budget is a million dollars, then you should be able to show that you can make two. If it's three million, you should be able to make six. And mm -hmm. if you can't do that, then you've increased the risk dramatically for the people who are putting that money in. What, are, what would you say are some of the biggest barriers one can encounter in producing a film and how should one prepare for those? Look, if you win an Oscar, great for you. If you make a hundred million, you know, like some of these movies we hear about that they made it for nothing and they broke, right. you know. But that shouldn't be the goal. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that could happen. That'd be great. But yeah. the goal should be get the movie made. Don't lose the investor's money. Get a distribution deal so that the movie actually is out into the world and it works. And be able to make that recruitment come back. If you can do that on your first film, your second film, now you go from that 500 to 1.2. Exactly. People come to me all the time. They come to me with their script, right? Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, this is my baby. Like, I, you know, this is it. I, I have to direct this. this is the, <laughs> I'm the only person on the planet that could possibly direct this movie. <laughs> and to that I I've say... I've never heard that, by the way. <laughs> Have you ever said it? <laughs> uh, to that I say, great. Good for you. You should direct that movie. But not now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you experiment with it to go out there and try to figure out how to make a feature film for your first time on the baby? Make it fifth. Make it third. But make a couple of other films and get your name out there and start getting some notoriety and start having people, like I said, reverse that course and get people to come to you mm -hmm. with offers of money and distribution because of your work. Mm -hmm. And then you can call your own shots. It, there's only really two ways you can go about this, right? You can pitch and sell, where you're literally going out to companies and asking them if they want to buy your script yeah. or option it, yeah. at which point it then becomes theirs. Right. Or you can make it yourself Yeah. and maintain control creatively, maintain control financially, you know, maybe have some skin in the game so that you actually own you know, uh, both sides of the investment side and show the investors that you're committed. But if you want to go 
uh, to a distributor and get worldwide distribution and potentially end up you know, with a Lionsgate deal or a Netflix deal or whatever the case may be and then have your film shown throughout the world, then you got to step up your game. And now you're talking about moving from the minor leagues into the Olympics. Right. That's the leap you have to take. Yeah. There's no sort of middle ground. Now, you've done a lot of things in your career. Was there ever a time where you wanted to give up? Uh, I fell into a hole. Like, I had an experience. I, I can't really discuss mm -hmm. it from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that experience brought me so far down. And I had come to this realization that I had given everything up to be here to do this. Yeah. And now, what do I do? I'm 50-something years old. What am I going to do? And a film came along that changed my life. The film was called Guns, Girls, and Gambling. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Him. It gave me that breath of confidence again that I needed. Just having that one credit, out of all my credits, that was the one that was sort of the pivot point for me to go, you know what? You're, you're going to be okay. Yay. Like, watch out. You know, here I go. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, was, it, was a tough, it was a tough time. Wow. Yeah. But I'm still grateful for it. You yeah. know, as it, now I can look back and say, I'm grateful for, for that whole experience because of what it ultimately led to. What does dream big mean to you? Go for it, you know, take the risk, roll the dice. Yeah. What else you got, <laughs> right? Don't be afraid, mm -hmm. just go for it. That's, That's what it. I had to do. You just go. Bai and I thought that we would pitch you an idea that we came up with. <laughs> okay. We were living in Silver Lake and we're surrounded by all these hipsters. And we thought these are very interesting characters. So we sort of created a legend where Echo Park and Silver Lake are built on this ancient Aztec burial ground. And the worst, like the most intense gang element comes back as zombies to kill the worst of the hipsters. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> and there's these two characters that are like the most unlikely heroes, these musician guys and they have to sort of save the neighborhood. My first question is, is it yeah. present day? Yes. yes. Okay, it's present day. Would it be a television sh series or would it be a film? It could be a television series. It could series. be a TV yeah. series. My, my, my gut tells me it would, it would be better probably served as a, ser as a series. Really? Yeah. I, I think that conceptually it sounds like a really fun thing. Okay, cool. Okay. And um, I think that you should definitely pursue it. Cool. Okay. And uh, let me know when, you're, when you wrote the first script. I think it's, if you do do it on a t as a television thing, you should map out your episode so that Okay. You know, we know where it's going. I love that. Yeah. Okay, love guys, it. you might have just seen History Made right here. Maybe <laughs> Franco will produce yeah. it with us. We'll see. Sure. <laughs> then, That'd be great. Um, but yeah, this has been a pleasure. You've been Huge like pleasure. for us because, like, you know, we brought all kinds of you know artists and you know actors in this. But for to hear your incredible. I call them nuggets, uh, you know, million dollar nuggets <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the table Thank here you. and to the show. I think you're going to help millions of artists. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you guys for having me. I really yeah. appreciate Endless it. Endless gratitude. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys, thanks so much for watching The Dream State, special film episode with executive producer Frank Osama. He's a man. And please make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss any of our episodes. Comment. Let us know what you want to hear. Uh, maybe you want Franco back. Let us know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like because we love those likes. All right, guys, Dream Team Directors on YouTube, thank you.